Hey guys, welcome to the vault. Uh, this is episode one of Clink Vision. Uh, we have Casey White in the house and Pierre's hosting. Well, I'm going to try to host. There's so <laughs> many, there's so many big personalities here that it's going to be very difficult when you've got uh, Andre here um, in one of his first big moments, right? And then you got Casey, yes, who, is, uh, who is standalone, like just a huge personality. So this is going to be some fun. But Jason, how about we, um, how about we get it started? Because I know you, you put a lot of work into 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 what we're going to see tonight um so i i'd love to get it started what wow now i gotta say that's a beautiful slide yeah it is that's a beautiful <laughs> slide. And it's, it's almost like a match made in heaven you know <laughs> you know you got a I bunch agree. of you got a bunch of guys that love hats that love design that have been following your 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 team's work for a long time casey and now we I, I don't know. I, I don't want to speak for everybody else, but I think it's safe to say that we're all looking forward to, uh, to this uh, partnership as we kind of move through something that I think is going to be pretty fantastic. Uh, yeah. So I, so I would love to sort of start out by pitching sort of my original vision for what this thing could be. Um, you know, one of the coolest parts of Clink is the process from start to finish, right? Mm -hmm or not, not even of clink of like of creating a, a minor league or a major league logo or whatever, whenever like the creation process is like really fun. And I've always wanted to show that process. Right. And actually the original clink 1.0, that was sort of what it was built on. It was just a blog that documented grandiosis process from start to finish that eventually started selling hats. And I really feel like one of the things missing from clink 2.0 is showing that process. Now you get a little bit of that with yeah. Monday morning crits on through to seeing the final design, mm -hmm. but it's not, it's not a real like look behind the curtain, right? Yeah. So when it came to how that could work, uh, how we could sort of show that, uh, you know, in for Clink 2.0, um, I mean, obviously video is great. It's like the ultimate medium for this kind of thing. And you guys are, are really the best at it when it comes to documenting, you know, what's going on in the, in the, in the hat world. So it was a perfect marriage, right? Um, I could concentrate on running clink, making sure our hats are the best hats we can, we can, we can get out the door mm -hmm. and you guys can help uh, document that process. So yeah, again, it's a, it's a, it's a match made in heaven. And, I, and, I like the idea too, and I think the viewers are going to dig what, what what we've put together because it really it's going to be kind of like a almost like a sporting event, right? I mean, mm -hmm. over the course of these next two weeks, it's, you guys are going to see not only like all of us sort of debating and talking creatively about where we could go, but you're going to see how the sort of wrestling match that happens between creative people, me as a sort of editor you know, the, the designer to see where they take it, all that stuff to, to, to finally it, those six designs being in the shop, everyone could pre-order them. You can, you know, yeah, you could, you could basically support your designer that you've sort of rooted for through this whole process. And I think that's really fun and exciting. So it's anyway. almost like the, it's almost like a reality TV meets views in the vault meets clink room. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, and I think what's interesting about the mix that we have here. Um, is that Andre is relatively new to like the clink world. You yeah. know, I, I, I kind of, I, I believe I kind of oh. introduced him to it with some, with some different designs that I was showing him and trying to get him to, to, to buy in. And he's, he's all in, but what's interesting is that fresh perspective and fresh take. And then you've got the dichotomy of, of his experience with clink room versus like Jason Leon and I, which I think adds to the, adds to the flavor, but I, um, I think we were all honored um, when you when you asked uh, to kind of to kind of um, jump into this with us, and sure. uh, we took the bull by the horns. We said, you know what, we want to make a logo here. So I reached out to John from Ink Park, um, and we floated some names around, and we landed on this. Clink oh, Vision. Yeah. Clink Vision. It's all, right. It's awesome. vision. Yeah. yeah. John. John. John Slade. It is always super yeah. fun. Yeah. And uh, yeah. You know, so what we're what we're looking to do here is in a reality based type type program is to kind of show how visions become reality in the world of clink room. So um, this is this is going to be fun. It's going to be absolutely fun. So just to, just to kind of give people a peek behind what they're going to see, right? I just want everyone to kind of understand what clink vision is. Um, 
So, you know, as uh, Jason, Leon, uh, Andre and I were talking through this, um, we were offered up some concepts from the Brandio Secret Vault. Um, so, listen, you, you know, Casey's got a twisted mind and, and we saw it. Uh, we saw it, we saw it, we saw his uh, twisted mind and his team's twisted mind come to fruition as we read through some of these concepts. Um, <laughs> right. That's the first piece of it. So that, that, that's, that's cool. And then, well, just uh, some, just, well, just to get some context to the Brandio yeah. Secret Vault, you know, 20 something years of Jason and I traveling the world, yeah. um, you know, everywhere from Japan and Venezuela, Italy, like we've been, you know, you know, North Carolina, West Virginia, you know, we've been deep in like coal mines in West Virginia and like, you know, out checking out like, you know, lobster fishermen out in the shores of Massachusetts. Like we, you know, we've been everywhere, right. everywhere we go. It's about becoming a sort of, um, a, an honorary citizen of the place that we go to. Mm -hmm. And we go there and do that as a way to gather research to come up with our crazy names, you know, the El Paso yeah. Chihuahuas and the Hartford Yard Goats and all, you know, we've named probably 60 teams at this point, 70 teams. And that all comes out of our research. But, you know, there's a lot on the cutting room floor at the end of that. And so I have this crazy database that I've gathered, Jason and I've gathered over the last 20 years. And then mix in also just sort of like goofball ideas that I have from my twisted mind as Pierre says. And yeah, um, yeah, you know what, dude, I think I think we'll all agree that it comes through in all the designs that you do for these minor league baseball teams. Absolutely. You know, you can yeah. kind of you can kind of feel that as you look at the logos and are immersed into it. Um, and even when I go to, what even when I go to the Hartford Yard Gold Stadium, I can feel it. Um, I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, don't they do an incredible job? Wow. I mean, they do, but it, but it's enhanced by the work that you did with the logo and kind of the branding of it. Um, so, yeah. so we take that, right. And then we, then we get, we get to marry them to some of um, Clink's favorite pros. So I think we've all learned to fall in love with several, I mean, I don't want to say some, all of the clinkers that kind of provide some of these magical, um, magical pieces for us to wear on our head. Mm -hmm. Um, so we get an opportunity to take those great, great, great concepts and then match them to some, some fantastic clink pros. Um, and then we, uh, and then the designers work their magic. So they're provided this challenge, right? I mean, this isn't easy to do. I mean, this is kind of a timed exercise, which I think is interesting because yeah. it's, it adds an element of, I don't want to say stress, but urgency to just really focus in and zero in on, on, on your subject matter and how you're going to make this appear on the canvas of a hat. Right. You know, and, and, um, and next up, Jason is solicit viewer feedback on colorways. So the wonderful world of colorways, I think that is where, um, you know, you see most of the debate <laughs> around any of these sorts of things, right. Yeah, is, absolutely. Oh, I would like this, but I wish it was this, but you know, like it's, mm -hmm. it's a lot of that kind of, kind of um, debate going on back and forth as you see um, all of these things kind of come together, right? Um, right. I don't know, Casey, you have first, and I know Jason has firsthand knowledge too when he's uh, with his hat crawler Instagram, but am I, am I in the wrong here by saying the colorways are usually the biggest point of debate? I try to avoid a lot of the comment section. I pay, <laughs> I pay, I pay, I pay someone to wade through that. So I don't really know. <laughs> I will know that we, you know, the clink, clink process of getting a design into the shop involves an editorial team that not only takes into account the Monday morning crits vote, but yeah. some other elements, right? And that's really where the colorway sort of lives or dies. Um, you know, there's a many sort of things that we sort of decide. I think, you know, I do, I do get some direct feedback that I hear that people get disappointed because of a change of a colorway, but you know, yeah we're trying to we're trying to balance art with commerce here and so yeah. sometimes that has to happen you can't please everybody you know no you cannot please everybody that's right right so then um the final designs go to pre-order on friday right at, at the at the commencement of this um now, yeah you know i guess there's some timing that has to go into into, into effect here but once we're done yeah, so just to um, be clear just to be clear because of the designers are have a or a crunch time actually doing it all in one week really isn't feasible i mean yeah the, the 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 even the run from monday where the designs are done all the way to friday or thursday night you know for us is a pretty intense run for us it's oh a yeah pretty crazy crazy right. gauntlet 
So we're actually, so it's not this Friday, but it's going to be next Friday. So, so actually next Monday, there won't be a Monday morning crit. It'll because the following Friday, all of our clink vision uh, masterpieces are going to be in the shop. Oh, that's outstanding. All right. That makes a lot of sense. So I, I mean, are you guys ready to get started here or what? Yes, sir. Do it. Oh, all right. So we got the concepts. Jason, you want to kind of take us through this? Yeah. So, uh, Casey, uh, gave us a, a big list of, uh, of concepts, uh, for us to wade through. And, and basically what we did is, is we did a little process of elimination, um, between, between, between us. We vetoed, basically gave everybody veto power on a few of the, the concepts. And, and so we got it down to a final list of 10 that we're going to now uh, reveal. And then uh, later on, we'll, we'll debate about it a little bit. So, and, yeah. and, Casey, and we, Casey, we've been sworn to secrecy too. We can't, we can't talk <laughs> about the ones that we got rid of. So right. Casey's entrusted us with some other um, concepts from his vault that we will never, no matter what happens, you can waterboard me. I am not going to tell you what those <laughs> concepts are. And we, and yeah, we, were before, go ahead. we were blindfolded, uh, picked <laughs> up right. at a secret location, yep. uh, and yeah. taken to the vault. You guys um, have no memories then, of the... Yeah, of the and vault. then they hit us with that uh, Men in Black flashy device, I think. Uh, I don't remember. Um, so, yeah, this is the list that, that we were <laughs> you out of the vault with. You assume. You, we assume. Before, 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 Jason, before you take off your our first name here, you know, just to give a little context to this process, I want to I want to show you guys the exact, essentially, sort of song and dance that Jason and I do when we go pitch to these teams. So when we go, like I said, we go to the town, we become honorary citizens. That's the whole first day. Then we go. We usually go to the ballpark. We have some beers, and then Jason and I sort of come up with like tons of names. You know, it could be anywhere from twenty to a hundred names, to, you know, depending on the region and town. That next morning, we come in slightly hungover and we pitch <laughs> all of our names and we sort of riff and what I'm about to do for you all right here, we riff on like the potential of what it could be. And so that's, that's the experience I want to, I want to give everybody is the sort of grandiose sort of pitch experience and, and, you know, I hope to inspire, uh, I hope to inspire all of our views from the vault guys. And uh, yeah, get 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 the designers' juices flowing too, because hopefully they watch this and they have a better vision of what might might be. Yeah, and I, just so you know, just as we get started here, Andre is very sensitive, so you got <laughs> you got to handle him with kid gloves, okay? He is lying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, I got I got a feeling Andre can handle his own. Uh, <laughs> <I did. laughs> All right, cool. So let's get started here. Okay. Okay. Boom, wow. hard score. Start with a banger. This is this is this is quintessential grandiose material here. In fact, this is a name that Jason has wanted to Jason, my business partner at Brandios, he, he has wanted to 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 use in minor league baseball for years. I'm gonna I'm saying like 12 years. We've probably pitched some version of this. Now this is this is a disgusting name at, at first blush, of course. But what it really is, is a nickname for a skunk. And I just think that's great. I think, I mean, that's sort of quintessential Brandios, right? It's like a weird name that people hear the name on ESPN or whatever. And they're like, the what? You named our team the what? But then, right. you know, you see the logo and it's this badass, you know, skunk, like, you know, holding a giant log, like ready to kick ass. Maybe he's got some of that Pepe Le Pew, you know, green uh, some stuff wafting that he's as he's swinging his like log through mm -hmm. through this uh, this stink. There's there's so much fun stuff that could be done. We Clink doesn't have a, a skunk logo yet, and I think Fart Squirrels is the name that uh, needs to be um, you know added to our first uh, skunk concept. So that's the number one. All right. Zero Fox. This one is not a name that I pitched to a team. This mm -hmm. one, I just, I don't know where I heard it, but first of all, the name is odd, but then if you say it out loud, I think it becomes clear what it is. Uh, Zero Fox. So this fox <laughs> doesn't give a shit. He gives the Zero Fox. So I was thinking, you know, I was thinking, 
a fox, you know, we could go a couple ways, right? You could go full Rambo, you know, like just like some, some, you know, no guns on a new era hat, but something blazing. Um, you know, he's just like ready to kick ass, ready to just destroy everybody in his path. Maybe he's like a football player. He's got a big zero on his chest and he's like, you know, just like stiff arming fools. Um, Maybe he's like a stuntman, mm. like an evil can evil style character, just like blasting through stuff. Um, I don't know. It could be really fun to try to figure out how to show a fox just not giving. Yeah, it to... sounds. It sounds kind of like me. It sounds kind of like me. So I think. Uh, I think. <laughs> Good fox version of Peter. I guess we just don't want. We don't want to know which of us is more most likely to be the fart squirrel. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll be the first squirrel. All right, cool. All right, cool. Next, okay. all right, the Iceman. All right, this one's a little more serious. This one's more about like how cool could the logo be. So my my idea is, I've always wanted to do a like a, a gnome character, right? Mm -hmm. Like a, I don't know what. Like growing up for me, there was this cartoon, and maybe it was on like PBS or something. It's called like David the Gnome. But he was this like badass little tiny gnome with a big red pointy hat, like running around. And he like flew on the backs of like eagles and like rode on the backs of like squirrels and stuff like that. He was dope. So I had this idea of like the Iceman, but instead of like a David the gnome running through the forest, it's like maybe it's kind of a gnome and all blue. Maybe he's got like a like a like an axe made of ice or like a hammer made of ice. Maybe it's like I'm thinking like the intro to like um, to like uh, Frozen, the movie Frozen, with all the dudes like old timey dudes like cutting ice in the thing and like singing singing these badass songs, wearing like reindeer pelts and like just like ready to kick ass. So this like Norwegian ice, maybe he's got some magic in it. Maybe as he swings his hammer, there's like you know um, snow and like icicles blasting off the basket back of his thing just like a sort of badass ice gnome iceman okay. well you're three for three in my book right now what's number four <laughs> all right this is this is this is one that i've been that jay and i've been wanting to do forever it's this idea of like the ultimate canadian mascot and you know I, i'm a i'm a kid of the 80s and the early 90s and there was this TV show. I don't know if there's any good. It probably wasn't, but I, we loved it. It's called Wuzzles. It was this like mashup of all these animal characters. And we, you know, we were like huge fans of Canada. We got the, the honor of rebranding the, um, the Vancouver Canadians, the minor mm -hmm. league team in, in Vancouver. And that was so fun to do. We got to do like a Mountie logo, which we were even told like, oh, the Mounties won't even let you do it. But the magic of baseball, like, you know, everyone everyone gets to, to sort of uh, do whatever you want if you're doing it for baseball. Right. But um, uh, yeah, so but one of our ideas that we would have loved to have done that we didn't get to do was this sort of ultimate Canadian mascot. So I'm picturing like the body of a killer whale with the racks of antlers from a moose and maybe he's got like a beaver tail and he's, I don't know, just like I could see it done a bunch of ways, right? He's wearing a Mountie hat. He's right. this like ultimate peak Canada mascot that everyone across the whole, across the whole country could, could be pumped about. Or just a picture of Leon. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. And Leon, and Leon, yeah. and it's <laughs> called... And it's named Leon. Yeah, there you go. He's more like a Canadian god, not a mascot. Right. That's, oh, right. that's true. Right. That's true. Right. All right. All right. All right. So let's move on to number five. All right. Number five, <laughs> the peanut gallery. You know, one of my favorite things about Clink is this ability to use sort of, I don't even know what they're called, like phrases, nicknames, idioms. Maybe there's some term I don't even know about, but, but you know, you couldn't name a team the peanuts. I mean, maybe you could but I don't know if that would be enough to build a whole team brand around, but there's definitely like these fun sort of sayings that we all say, but we don't think about them as any different. I mean, we've all probably said, you know, like that's enough from the peanut gallery or he's heard someone say that, but I love this idea that we could show the peanut gallery, like two peanuts fighting each other, like 
you know, it's basically like um, Mr. Peanuts, younger, you know, jerky brothers yelling at each mm -hmm. other. Maybe they're kind of like um, peanut versions of who are the Muppet guys up in the <laughs> up in the um, you know the two old Muppet guys old up guys, in the yeah. rafters of the Muppet Show. I don't know. I just knew them by the two guys I hated most on the Muppets. <laughs> you didn't like them, dude. That's like the best thing. What do you mean? That's the best. That's the best. <laughs> the best Look at I. I struggle a chord with Casey. <laughs> yeah. right. I know those guys were great. This would be a, the peanut version of those guys. Uh, Maybe gotcha. they're yelling at you. Maybe they're like curse words, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, all right. Now I like it, Casey. Now you sold me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This one's for all this one's for all the commenters, the hater commenters in the comments. Uh, oh, Munfu, has, <laughs> Munfu, Munfu has plenty of those on his uh on his YouTube. So yeah. I guess we're good there. Yes, but I know my my son, my son and I are like huge fans of Cuphead, the video game, and how they like created all these characters that feel like you've known them forever mm -hmm. but they're like totally created whole cloth another canadian canadian shout out to the cuphead creators and um anyway so i could see a sort of like faux retro peanut gallery throwback could be dope nice all right cool so number uh we're up to number six one-armed bandits all right again this is another one of those things that people say i mean this is a nickname for a uh, for a um for a slot machine, the one-armed bandit. And so, you know, I could see it going in that cuphead style where it's a, it's a, um, one, it's a, you know, a, what, is, what is, I just said it. <laughs> a slot machine. I'm not, yeah, a slot yeah. machine come to life, thank you. Yeah. It could be a slot machine come to life. There's actually is a character, like a bad guy in cuphead, you know, a slot machine. So maybe we like go a different direction. Maybe it's, maybe it's um, a, a big, like sort of beefy, like bouncer in a casino and his teeth are made up of like the spinning things and he's got like cherries in his teeth and he's like you know wearing like a an Al Capone style suit and he's mm -hmm. like kicking people out you know booting people out of the casino or stealing a big bag of someone's money right um, but maybe oh then maybe it's like a a guy in like a striped black and white striped shirt like an old tiny you know oh brother where I stay style like uh, criminal um whatever right. stealing people's stealing people's money well casey, casey as we move into number seven what the hell do you have for breakfast every morning <laughs> <laughs> no breakfast man i just i just download creativity from oh my universe. god all right so you just eat ideas for breakfast <laughs> i love it all right so let's move let's move on to number seven make your own luck yeah. all right so this this is one of those this is actually an idea that i've, that I've also wanted kicking around and this this actually was born out of um, I don't know if you guys remember this, but at the end, tail end of Clink 1.0, um, I uh, the Hat Club approached us to create like their own brand, and it was one of the most creative times in my life, in my creative life. I, every Friday, I would dedicate the whole day to creating concepts for Hat Club and for their own private label, and they still release a lot of those. It's very cool to see those live on, but this is one idea that hit the cutting room floor that they that they that I think I never got right is the real answer. I think I did some sketches and I never got right. And I would love to see another designer tackle it. But it's this idea of like a um, a, a three leaf clover, right? Mm -hmm. um, a la Boston Celtics, but but obviously not. <laughs> mm. But like a character, a character three leaf clover. It has like a fourth leaf like pinned to it like he he you know he was not one of the lucky ones right i mean right. i know i feel that way i mean you know uh, you know sometimes sometimes you don't feel i know I, i'm just i'm not a lucky person <laughs> whatever whatever fortune and i've had a lot of good fortune in my life but you know i feel like that's a little bit different we could debate the difference between those two things but anyways i think you have to make your own luck i think it's about putting yourself out there about like you know busting your ass about pouncing on opportunities, all that stuff. And I feel like this could be a cool sort of fighting Irish, but it's a three leaf clover with a leaf stuck on it. I don't know. That's mm. that's it. All right. All right, the lunatics. All right. The lunatics. So this is a this is this is 
this is this is an idea actually for a league that maybe we we clink will do in the future and you know the, the leagues are really less about like filling slots in a league as you guys probably know and more about just sort of a fun way to challenge designers to sort of give mm -hmm. them framework to work in i think there's one myth actually about creativity and about making art that like if you, that like any restriction is bad for creativity that's not true like creativity actually thrives under pressure under constraints it forces you to like figure out stuff and so that's what the leagues are trying to do you know it's like trying to trying to solve this problem of the galaxy league or the um the mythology league and lunatics could be a cool sort of first foray into that it's like taking a term that we all know i guess a lot of these actually are kind of like this the peanut gallery and all of this but lunatics the idea would be like a crate like lunatic like a crazy moth like a lunar moth and if you all haven't seen what like a lunar moth looks like it's this amazing like i think it's mostly white and gray but it has these like mint green elements and this beautiful pattern on its wings it's this beautiful animal but you know just doing a moth logo could be cool i mean i could see like an aaron bird killing just like like he did with his um his hummingbirds logo okay. you know just doing like a straight up beautiful moth that would be great but i'm thinking more more sort of crazy character sort of going nuts straight jacket like he's a, a moth gone mad he's the lunatic nice okay yep yeah. all right so eight for eight now we're off to number nine all right arctos so this one's a little bit different right this one actually falls squarely in the mythology league and so Arctos was the original term, Germanic term for bear. It's like a proto-Germanic. And um, the, ancestors, the ancestors, like the, the original name was Arctos, but then the nickname for the bear was bear and bear meant brown one. It was a, it was a term of endearment. I think it meant almost like a family member, brown one. Mm -hmm. And um, it, and I, and I think, I, and I might get this wrong, but I'm pretty sure. And wh whoever ends up getting this, 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 this one, if they get this one, will have to totally dive into this deeper. But I believe that saying the word Arctos was like a was like a bad omen. Like if you were out like foraging for mushrooms or hunting or whatever it was, like you didn't want to say the word Arctos, so you would call it bear, and that eventually became the term that we know for bear. So mm. this idea of like, so yeah, so the, the, the superstition was that if you said Arctos while you were out in the woods, that it would summon this bear. So I love this idea of this like ghost bear, maybe it's sort of like Northern Lights, like a, like a bear being made out of Northern Lights. Yeah, that would be um, good. Yeah, this like summoning, I mean, I love, one of the movies I love um, is Brave, the Pixar movie Brave. Mm -hmm. And like when, when the woman is like, when the girl is like riding through the woods and like all of the, you know the the willow the wisps of the woods i think they're called or something like that are sort of coming out of the moss and it's this like really magical vibe and uh anyways arctos i wonder if you had to it's say also, it, i wonder if you had to say it three times like beetlejuice <laughs> <laughs> maybe but it's a, it's a dope, this, i think i think leon's, Le, leon's gonna venture outside right leon's gonna venture outside <laughs> he's just he's gonna start whispering it three times real fast see if a bear emerges that's right leon you gotta you gotta do an experiment for all of us we want a live a live feed of you screaming arctos into the woods three times. and and if there's anyone on this on this panel right now that can handle tackling a bear i think it's leon chen yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <for me>. nice. <laughs> all right all right our last one this is another one of those that's been kicking around man i've been trying to get a team to adopt this name for ages it's great that we're ending with this one this is the lamb chops you know we think of lamb chop you think of right you think of the food of course or you think of this like cute little puppet from like the 60s or 70s or something i don't know what you got yeah. most of y'all probably don't even remember that but it was this set of like soft puppet no 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 this is this is the this is the brandios twist right our lamb is like a butcher, like coming to kick ass. He's going to cut your ass in half. Oh. He's got a huge cleaver. Jesus Christ. Like a, Relax, full, Casey. You're scaring the shit out of me. Full butcher. No, I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't stop. He's got a butcher. He's got a, he's got a butcher, uh, you know, apron on. Yeah. He's like out for blood, man. You're not going to get this guy served on Easter. This guy's 
this guy's fully, fully earning his keep here. I, now this is this is ahead. Andre's first first uh, foray into the clink world. You're gonna give him nightmares. He's not gonna be able to go to sleep tonight. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Yo, you're crazy. Man. Nah, Leo. Uh, no, nah, no. Nah. Andre lives in a tough part of town, man. He's just fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Andre, Andre, and I were just in Patterson, New Jersey. Yeah. We, and we survived, so he's okay. Yeah, we made it. We made it out of there alive. So we did. I'm into Patterson. You can handle it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right cool so we got listen we've got 10 um incredible concepts here right but we all know the concepts are one thing but mm. the people and the talent behind bringing something like this to life is what's most important right, right. Uh, oh. so we've got some fantastic clinkers um that that we're gonna kind of marry up right to these concepts so we've got aaron bird right Aurelian, mm -hmm. Austin, Jacobo, Jason V, and John uh, of Ink Park. Um, wow. Listen, these six folks right here, to me, they just put out heater after heater after heater. Their art is, each one of them is very unique in terms of how they stylize and how they kind of create. Um, but but there's one thing we can all agree on. Um, they are fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. And I can't think of a better group of, uh, of artists to kind of, I don't know, pioneer this clink vision journey, right? I mean, these, these, these six are, are incredible. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, Jason, I know, um, I know you've been watching from afar for a while, you know, with, with mm -hmm. us. Like, what are your thoughts here on this group of guys? Uh, I mean, just looking at these names, this is probably the best of the best uh, of Clink, um, in my opinion. And I'm just impressed that they've all agreed to take part in this process with us. Um, you know, knowing how busy they are, knowing how many designs they put out, they all have you know other jobs. Um, but to to be part of this process, uh, it's really just kind of an honor, actually. Um, yeah. The talent that they're bringing to this game. Yeah, Leon, any thoughts here? I think the the big thing about some of these guys is they're really really versatile. So I'm looking forward to, you know, assigning these guys some stuff that number one that they'll do really really well, and number two uh, maybe stretch them outside their comfort zone a little bit. Mm. But you know, that's this is like a designer, uh, and we'll steal uh, Jason's word, uh, sommelierine. So oh, okay, don't don't <laughs> insert, no. do we, not do not insert that word. <laughs> no ever again <laughs> do not i'm excited not, been not trying to get rid of it ever since. No, he's been trying he's been leon's been waiting for his little moment all, all evening look at him look how proud he's making a thing <laughs> look how proud he is of himself great i'm word. proud of you leon it's a great word <laughs> yeah so um you know and i i know andre you're going to continue to build um a, a relationship with these these six artists man because okay. Um, the more you're immersed in the clink world, the more you're going to get to know these, these guys and what they create. Right. Um, Casey, any, any, um, any, uh, any words around this before we uh, kind of marry them to the different concepts you just outlined? I love, I love everything you guys said. I told, I mean, I think Jason nailed it. It's such a, it's such a cool honor that they're willing to step up and do this. Um, you know, I, I, they, these are, these are, yeah, these are six of some of my favorite guys that we work with. And I think, you know, one thing that's sort of, I've heard a little bit of grumbling about is like, oh, why are they the same six, you know, why are they the same, whatever, two dozen designers that appear a lot over and over again on Monday morning crits. And to be fair, it's because they, I can trust them. Right. You know, I, I trust them to deliver. I trust that the artwork that they're going to get to us in the next few days, you know, on Tuesday and Wednesday is going to be clean, ready for embroidery, professionally done. Like, you know, they've, they're they're yeah these are these these represent six of some of my favorites yeah and um and, and, and they're so versatile. That, they're so versatile, so versatile. yes yeah. because I, I think about this right aurelian almost got typecast as the evil guy right because he, what i say by evil i don't mean he's evil i mean of creating evil designs but then you take a step back and you're like, wait a second. No, he's not like he no. did, you know, he did the hippo one. He did a lot of stuff that was a little softer in yeah. nature. So it's interesting how, you know, it's important too to step back and kind of look at their full body of work 
to get a grasp for what the, of yeah. what they're capable of and how they handle things. So, right. yeah. yeah. And then, and then another, another reason why these guys were chosen is because these guys all have worked for Brandios too. So a big part of this process going forward and certainly for this first version is can they take criticism, right? Can they, right. can I push back on them and will they respond to, to, to changes? Um, and honestly, that's, I mean, if that go, this goes for any sort of aspiring clinker designer, like, you know, you can, you can always send me concepts and you get preferential treatment. I'm not, this is not a secret. You get preferential treatment if you take my <laughs> advice, not because I know necessarily what's going to do well. I, 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 I oh, made, my batting average is probably just a little bit better than the average Joe. And that's probably all that I need to sort of now, qualify for this. The, the whole point is the acceptance of feedback. And I've talked yes. about this before, even yes. in my, even in my work life, like I always look for po folks that come from a creative background that can accept feedback because those exactly. folks tend to be the ones that are yearning for and see, ser searching for that critical yeah. feedback to make them better. Um, exactly. I think that's what differentiates them from the ones that are more resistant yeah. and their artwork actually looks better when they're more, understanding and, and accepting of critical feedback. That's my, that's yeah. my take on it. Yeah. We've got, we've got, we've got 22 years now of, of creating logos just for them to be embroidered. And, you know, so when I give feedback, it's not trying to make it look like a logo I would do. I, in fact, I want the opposite, right? I want their voice to shine, but there's just simple basic things that you can do that, that give your logo a shot of being looking like really, really singing when it hits, when it hits uh, a hat. And as I mean, can I, share, can I, share a real, I share a real life yeah. example of that before we move yes. on. So with Sammy that I did with Jay Matz, right? Um, we had a, a concept and, and it had a halo, right? And Jay Matz and I tossed around the idea of perhaps doing bones for the, for the halo. And I was like, ah, that ain't going to work. It's too much detail. And then you came back and said, hey, you know, I have something that I think can turn this from great to iconic. And you talked about making it into a, into a gold chain, like a dog chain for the halo. Right. And honestly, it, it made the difference between that hat being good to great. Um, and I think those moments are, um, are important. And, you know, listen, yeah. for someone who's had as much experience as you, I think everyone should be listening and, and not, not complying, listening and, oh. and understanding and, 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 and implementing some of the yeah. great ideas you have. So. I, I love it. I love it when clickers push back on some ideas, but I do think one of the unexpected uh, joys of, of Clink 2.0 is that I get to be an editor, right? I get to, and, an, and a good editor. I actually, I've been reading a lot about what, what it means to be a good editor, right? And what I think makes a good editor is making someone's work better, like more, more than it could be. So helping them weed out, right? Simplify, helping them um, make small adjustments, offering up small additions that help make it more iconic. So that's mm -hmm. that's my role here, and I hope that over the course of these next few episodes, people get to see that live in action. That it's about making their work better. So that's awesome. All right, so now we're getting into the fun part, right? So we know <laughs> the concepts, right? <laughs> we know the the fantastic designers that are in play here. Now we're going to get into a little uh, match game in honor of Valentine's Day, right? Since Valentine's Day just passed, let's match these these folks up, right? I, I Mary's a harsh word, like it's strong, you know. It's like <laughs> I should say harsh. I should say harsh. This is for life. This is for life, man. J Jason got a little bit uncomfortable. He's like, I don't want to say Mary's a harsh word because I'm married, you, you know. But but I but it's it's it's, 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 it's not a lie though. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very final word, right? So but we're gonna match these up. So. I guess, I guess in the spirit of, of what we were just discussing, and this is just going to be a discussion, right? And we're just going to talk yeah. through who we think is right for what and, and kind of get to a place where we have six designers with six concepts. All right, hold on. Yeah. There this, we is, go. this is us learning how the sausage is made, right, Jason? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't pay attention. <laughs> and, and, and to be clear, um, the making of sausage is pretty gross. So, um, yeah. yeah. So, all right. So like, how do you guys want to go about this? I think this is the interesting piece. So Casey, you've been in rooms like this, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, we've all been in rooms like this with where the subject matter might be slightly different, but how do you mm -hmm. suggest we go about this? Yeah. So I think, I think originally you guys had pitched this idea that we would each 
sort of adopt one, right? Adopt a name that we loved and then and then yeah. and then draft mm -hmm. draft someone to match it. I think that's a, that's a good idea, but I think it's more fun and and I think it would be more fun to watch is if you know someone feels passionately about someone, you know, a, a matchup, a name, mm -hmm. and a and a designer that make your case, like sell me. Why, 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 why should, why should they, why should they be it? And then, you know, we could push back if we think maybe someone else is a better candidate. Right. And I think in the case of Andre, um, you can participate where you feel appropriate, step yeah. back where you feel appropriate, considering uh, the depth of knowledge that you may or may not have around some of these artists, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know a ton about each individual artist, but I kind of have an idea of what I want to see. So mm. great. Yeah, we'll make it work. So why don't you tell me this, um, Andre, which of those concepts do you want to see come to life most? I'm not going to lie. It may sound funny, but <laughs> hear me out. But I feel like after he explained the fart squirrels, you can make it work. I knew All that's right. where you were going. Because right. I feel like with like yeah. a light colored hat, like I feel like if you did an off-white two-tone hat with a, with a, uh, um, with a, a skunk, that that should that that would look really good. You can, you, nice. can, you can say shit. It's okay. Oh yeah, yeah. What about, you kind of okay, what about what about like a retro like faux retro character, right? Like straight out of MLB's like Cooperstown collection, but mm -hmm. like done like black and white pinstripe. That would be dope too. Yeah, I feel like for some reason when you were describing it, I took it as something that would be yeah like retro just. Yeah. Well, in honor in honor of Andre, that's going to be one concept that we're going to do because I think the limited, the limited scope in terms of what you know about. No, the I'm artists. just going to I'm just going to move it over a little bit then. I love it. Ooh, okay. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. So let's let's think. Like uh, for me, I have an idea of which artist I'd like to see do that, but I, you know, I, I don't want to like. Here, Pierre, go. Don't 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 oh, do go, man. Here. Man, I I'd want I'd want to see John of Ink Park do it. I think. Uh, I I just have a I have a feeling that he would put that that f he's he's known to do some great um some great animal mascotty type things yeah. in really interesting and cool ways. Yes. Um, I I mean I can you can go through his Instagram page you can see probably forty of them before you even mm -hmm. have scrolled a minute. So to me, yeah. you know, it would fart squirrels is almost lined up for him in terms of what he's what I've seen from him in the past, and I would say a second person. A second to him to do that to me would be Jason V. Um, mm, what I yeah. think about what I think about their subject matter and what they've done up until now. That's just my opinion, though. I think I think yeah. I think Jason V. I think John and Jacobo would all slay this project. But I 100% agree. This is a John Ing Park project. Do we, the question is: Do we want to go that route, or do we want to challenge them a little bit? Make me make it give them well, some subject matter they may not be so comfortable with. I think I think that's an interesting take. I, I'm I'm going to one of the things that I heard unanimously from every single guy on this list was like, "Oh man, what if I can't do it?" Whatever. Yeah. And, okay. I, and I had to say to all of them, "I'm going to make you look good. Don't worry. I'm going to make you look." Yeah, good. and I so, think I think the other thing is too, you got to take into account the fact that there's time constraints involved. And yeah, so now you're yeah. saying, "Hey, learn. Hey, I want to stretch. I want to take you outside your comfort zone. And on top of that, I'm going to time you." I think yeah, that right. would be the pressure is not necessarily. I I think that's probably going a little bit far, but um, I, I, like the, I, I I like the thinking, Jason. But let's for this round, let's uh let's 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 tee up strength yeah. to strength here. Yeah, then then I do like John for fart squirrels. He does a great yeah. job of capturing uh like motion and and yes. essence. Yeah. Uh, look at like Grim Gordita where you had that that death taco. Just, just the fumes coming off of that thing. Um, oh my god! I didn't want. I didn't want to eat it at all. Now you're gonna see the fumes <laughs> coming off a squirrel's butt. All right, so we <laughs> fart squirrel. We are, we are doing, <laughs> giving that one to John. I think so. I think that's a lock. All right, let's lock it in. Look at that! Look at that! Andre is already making waves in the clink world. In the clink let's world, go, baby. Look at this! Look at this! All right, let's so go. maybe, um, maybe, uh, maybe. Just to kind of narrow it down a little bit, maybe um, Leon, why don't you pick an artist? Ooh, pick an artist. See, this is this is where it gets weird, right? Because like, we 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 pick John, and then now it almost feels like he's eliminated, even though we, yes. we got him a good match, right? So 
He John is. Stop eliminated. What do you mean? First, he's a first rounder. Yeah, he's yeah. A first rounder. So like, move on, Leon. Stop being so Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's pick. Okay. <laughs> let's match up. Let's match up, Austin. Okay, so we're this one's going to be a harder one to match up. I think. Okay, I, I I have a I have a pretty strong opinion about this actually. I think I think there's two that he could that he would really like nail. Okay, I think I think I think lunatics. I think he could do some really cool things because one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure Austin was a part of this, and Austin is like one of our best sellers, like yeah. consistently offers up like a very unique vision of what a clink hat could be, and I absolutely love it. He understands this like. The, the, the element of storytelling that's really important to a clink cat, but he does it in this like very simple, very cool way. Austin is insanely talented, but mm -hmm. I think he could do a lot with lunatics. You know, it wouldn't be in the full sort of character route. Uh, it would be more of like embracing the pattern of the wings and, mm -hmm. you know, sort of telling that story. And then I think the other one, and, I, and I'm leaning towards this one is Arcos, where it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's this mix of like, maybe he just uses like a few colors on like an all black hat. And he really creates this idea of this like bear, ghost bear being summoned out of, you know, sort of magic. Right. I don't, I almost, I was thinking Aurelian for Arctos. I was okay. too. That's interesting. I, I, I'd like to see what he could do with a ghost bear. Okay. I think Aurelian would do good with Iceman as well though. Yeah, he would. Yeah. Yes. Or even lamb chops. All right. What about uh, you guys? What what, what what should Austin tackle? Hmm. Trying to, I'm looking through his past work. Um, now I'm trying. I mean, he's he's very talented and very diverse. It's uh, yeah. He covers all sorts of subject matter. He does. But uh, you know, he could do like a one arm bandits really well. Um, I'm thinking. Um, something that has like. Sorry. No, that's okay. I think he's. I think uh, the dog's passionate too. Yeah, he's. he's dog maybe a dog doesn't like that idea. Right, so. I. You know, I'm gonna mute my. Yeah. I kind of think like one armed bandits. Like you know, if we did go that route, I think to that to the whale that uh, Jason V did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I think Jason V that art that he did for that lines up very nicely with like what John does to me. Mm -hmm. And I, and honestly, when I'm looking at this, like if, if we did end up going one arm bandits, like Jacobo yeah. or Jason V would be the two people that I would think could handle that in a, right. in a, in a cartoony type feel. But when it comes to Austin, I think he's very versatile, but I also think, in terms of what I see here right now, I think he's probably the one that can't do certain things here, in my opinion, based on what I've seen. Like, not that he's not talented enough, just that it's not right. like his normal. That's why I almost think that Casey's right about Arctos. Not that I, I'd love to see Aurelian do it. And I'm not trying to speak for Casey and saying why he chose Austin for Arctos. But to me, when I'm looking at the list, Mm -hmm. um, that's the one that lines up most nicely mm -hmm. with Austin. If we went that with that, oh, Casey's still muted. Casey, you're still muted, man. <laughs> Sorry, I still have the dog to stop barking. I feel pretty strongly that Lunatics and Arctos are in Austin's wheelhouse, and Austin's Austin's contributions to Clink are more specific. It's, I don't think it's that he couldn't handle it. Yeah, it's yeah. That I think I think that most of these. We have a vision of a sort of character, a minor league style character, and, I, mm. and Austin's strengths, I think, lie in other things. But mm. I think it, I, I, I like Aurelian for Arctos. My only sort of hesitation is like, Aurelian is like, his stuff has like weight to it. It's like powerful. Like um, of all the, the Clint Kong illustrations that show off our hats that we post, he's done, the two that he's done are the basketball ones where the Kong is like jumping out at you, dunking the ball sort of in your face. And then the one where Kong is like sitting on the basketball. I don't know if you've seen that, but you know, he's uh, Aurelian is like thick lines. Like he nails the character with these like very thick lines. Yeah. It's so hard. It's actually so insanely hard. It's one of the reasons mm -hmm. why Aurelian is one of the best so, guys that we have. So we should but, consider we should consider this, right, guys? So if if and Casey, this is where I think we defer to you from an experience standpoint yeah. because you're you know you're looking at this, but 
So what this does really is it limits us to one of two concepts for Austin in terms of, you know, where, where this discussion is going, which is lunatics or Arcto. Yeah. So I think we're kind of debating which one of those we want to see come to life mm-hmm. more so than yeah. anything else at this point. I think that's true. I think maybe Iceman too could be cool. He could do a kind of, you know, really inspired by like Norwegian, Swedish sort of art and design. Yeah, he did um, a I great job on that. Some really so. cool things. Yeah. That's so I think elephant. Iceman is maybe maybe a third placer there. But okay. um, well, look, maybe maybe we move on. Let's let's we we we've we've why we've don't we sort of hashed out. Yeah. Jason, why don't we move those three right to a different yeah. section with Austin, and we'll kind of figure that out later, right? I like okay. it. We can just that. for just for now, we'll put Austin's name over there as we kind of figure let's, out the rest. I love it. Let's get messy. This is yeah. Good. Let's let's mess it. Let's get let's let's get a little messy. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Jason, why don't you select either a concept or an artist that you'd like to kind of? I, actually, I'm I'm going to throw out both. Okay. I really like Jason B for lamp shots. Um, mm-hmm. I think he did a great job with like scare bears. He has yeah. He has a great um, knack for. Um, humanizing an animal Um, so to me I'd like to see him tackle lamb chops if that's one of the concepts we we move forward I thought lamb chops was a cool concept yeah that's a great it's a great one I almost want to see Jason V do zero fox though I was going to suggest zero fox that one too yeah Yeah. Yeah. well I think that we just had a unanimous selection there we want Jason V to do zero fox well, I think we're still deciding because I, I no, I okay. think I think I think I think we're both. Maybe we do the same thing we did for Austin. I yeah, move them Fox over. Lamb chops. Yeah, move zero fox and lamb chops to Jason V. And now we've got okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I kind of want to see Aurelian tackle the ultimate Canadian mascot. You know, he's he's a French guy. So I feel yep. like he would uh, he would have some. Uh, but he's France French, right? He's France. Yeah. He's from France. Yeah, yep. Par- Parisian, Parisian French. There is a quite a. There's a big difference. Yeah. No, no, I'm not saying they're the same. Because because honestly, I don't want to. I don't want to slight Leon, but the Parisians are far more cultured. That's fine. You can make fun of Quebec. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about Quebecers. So. All right, so. Let, can we can we tackle Jacobo first? Because I think Jacobo okay. is an interesting one. Okay, mm-hmm. sure. If that's okay, I, I, I. And this doesn't mean that we have to, we can't take from one of these other piles yeah. for Austin or Jason, right? right? For sure. I mean, we Absolutely. Could, we could certainly take one of those. Um, I feel like Jacobo is like a mix of Jason V meets Aurelian, almost like that. Mm-hmm. His style mm-hmm. is almost kind of like in the middle. He's not like always doing the super mean stuff as like. Aurelian does, but he's not always. He's like right in the middle. I feel like. Ah oh, man, I, I don't he, know, man. I'm, he makes some cool stuff, though. Yeah, he does. I I love his stuff. I I don't know, like uh, make your own luck and one armed bandit. Those are that, things that he could handle. I was yeah. exactly thinking the exact same thing right now. Yeah, I like it. Right. It's the barber kind of. Dude, I love the the barbarian is yeah, one of my yeah. favorite. Is one of my listen. It's one of my favorite clink designs of all time now. And I, I never get haircuts, but this thing right here, man, is the most – Is I love it, man. Yeah, it's underrated. That, dope. that thing is really dope. And it's almost got, like, this shaving cream under. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, man. Yeah, I like that. This guy is a killer, man. So, all right. So, I, I, let me make an argument for both. Okay. And you guys – and maybe you guys decide. Yeah. So I think Jacobo, Jacobo killed it with the, with the um, money chasers. Mm-hmm. I he did. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, it's so, it's sold incredibly well. It's like perfectly executed. I know. I know. Jason thinks that uh, that he looks like he's, you know, crapping coins. But I think that's the <laughs> point. I mean, he's he's. I think he's. Chased. I think he said coffee beans. Okay. <laughs> he's getting chased. Like he's a bag of money getting chased. Of course, he's crapping coins. That's exactly yeah, what he's yeah. doing. Yeah. He's Cold scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he is. He's not crapping his pants. He's crapping his bag. Yeah. That's so, it. anyways, I think. So I, I like the idea maybe of like, a, I, I kind of know some inside track that Jacobo might be working on a sequel to mm. um, to uh, Money Chasers. So maybe this this is the return of the Jedi. one Arm Bandits is the return of the Jedi of his- um, Of his trilogy. trilogy, of his trilogy. Of his Moneybags trilogy, yeah, maybe. I'm, maybe. In, I'm, in, I'm in on that. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in on that. Yeah. Now, listen, I do want to say, I, I did see something. Remember, uh, John from Ink Park did put together something that was uh, kind of a slot machine, right? Or was that okay. a vending machine? It was, it was an vending. arcade machine. Arcade. It was an arcade machine. Oh, arcade machine. Coins right, right. Yeah. So Coins that showed me there's yeah. some intense possibilities, even with this one. This is going to be pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. So let's yeah. do that with him, right? One Arm Bandits will be uh, Jacobo. The trilogy. All right. All right. So, oh, wow. Look at us. Look at this. Very little, very little blood spilled too. That's what's most impressive mm -hmm. about this. Well, we're not, we're not to the last, we're not to the end here. Just, just. Well, yeah. Leon, Leon did in. tell me to ex expect a little blood in this argument. That's what he said to me. <laughs> well, let, so let me, let me sort of interject here. I, I really want to see the ultimate Canadian mascot come to life. So mm. I would love to sort of look, all of these can be, have a second life when we do, you know, round two. Yeah. Of Clink vision. None of these are, are dead forever, but I'm all right. If this is one you're if this is one you're passionate about, right? And this is one you want to see happen, and Clink Room is your baby, why don't we figure Let's out who we're gonna have do this? Right. Okay. So that kind of that, so for me. Well, let me hear let me hear from Leon and Jason first. What are your guys' thoughts? Like where would you go? So, so not to work backwards, but I seen one time um, John from Ink Park, he designed this tattoo for Ben Christensen which was a mashup of multiple MILB teams. Yes. So, so that's, if, if I, I, yeah, that, so that's all I'm going to say about it. But Yeah, but that doesn't mean he's the only one that can do it, Leon. No, no. no. I'm not saying So this that. is, so, so I like what you're thinking. Obviously, John is capable, all of these guys are capable of doing all of these. That's not mm -hmm. the question. The yeah. question to me is like, what do we want out of the logo? And what I want out of this logo is not a character, actually. I mean, he's going to be a character. What I, what I want it to feel is like more uh, authentic. No, right? yeah. no, like a like like like. What if the NFL did a minor league logo that had a crazy concept behind it, right? You could picture like mm. the sort of. That's why I think Aurelian is the guy because I think right. you could do big, bold, sleek. Like, imagine if if you know if Toronto got a, a an NFL team. And the idea was calling them the Canadians and their and their helmet logo was this like ultimate Canadian mascot. I mean, you would want Aurelian to do it. You wouldn't want uh, a, a guy like you don't want you don't part. want a you don't want a Brandios theme to this one. You don't want a Brandios. Exactly. Right. Exactly. I'm with you. you. I'm with you. You don't want the family you're not looking for the family friendly Brandios type minor league logo. You're looking for something looking. that's yeah, I got it. I don't think it'd like, be like the it'd be like the iron pigs though. You guys did the iron pigs, right? Like that's thank you, thank like you for NFL. seeing thank thank you for seeing me as a complete designer, Leon. Unlike yeah, Pierre, thank you. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? I mean, listen, you're the one that just described it and agreed with me. <laughs> look, I've, I've look, I made I have made my name on doing a minor league goofball stuff, so I'm not I'm not faulting you. But that doesn't but, mean um, that I don't think you can do other things. I'm saying you're not looking for a brand, you're not looking for a brandios vibe on this one. <laughs> thank you. That's, that's Aure awesome. Aurelian is a good is a good match, I think. Yeah, I'm good with I think, that. I think it'd be cool to it'd be cool to zigzag, right? Because you expect yeah. you expect the wuzzle, the, the Saturday morning cartoon character, but no, we're like giving them like an NFL style, like badass, yeah, moose, beaver, orca, whatever. Yeah, this is that's gonna be a crazy one, whatever the hell that is. Because I, I know, mean, you I know, can't I, I, I can't even imagine what that's gonna look like. Hell yeah! All right, so now we've got. So I think in order to get Aaron placed right. He's a talented guy. So talented. So I think one reason, why Aaron, one reason why Aaron has not been nailed down is I think Aaron is the most diverse or most yeah. flexible mm -hmm. of all these, right? He's capable of doing sort of like, and I get a lot of actually of other sort of concepts he pitches. I mean, he's capable of doing very cerebral things. Obviously, he did he did Leon's hat that he's wearing right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, like beautifully executed, like retro logos. He's so, he, yeah. he's, he's got such a crazy diverse bag of of tools at his well, disposal um, well what about this then um you know you described lunatics as, as maybe possibly taking in this moth with all this uh you know crazy patterns and, and wings and, and stuff he did a great job with the flying fish um he's done some other stuff like the cherubs from from inland empire what if we gave him lunatics I think it's a good and idea. Let him just and run I, with the pa patterns. And, and yeah, it, well. yeah, the patterns. It's this, it could be this mix of this sort of pattern with this, like, with the, the sort of mm. gone crazy vibes. Glow in the dark thread, of course. Mm -hmm. 
I think it's yeah. a good. I think it's a good matchup. I think you would be good at make your own luck too. I think that's a yep. good one too. Yeah, yeah. Because Aaron actually, Aaron also almost better than any other clinker understands the sort of culture, the cultural intersection of like sports, pop culture, mm -hmm. what clink is, what the fitted community wants. He has this dude is a genuine hat guy too. Like, and he's a, yeah. Yeah. Because remember yeah. when we had him on the show? This dude, this dude was a genuine hat guy. I mean, yeah, he was pulling out some gems, man. Yeah, he's right. He he has his. He understands the survey of the land better than anybody else. And I think, like, make your own luck. I think you make a great point. Is the right? It's the intersection of sports because it could be. Con you know what I mean? It has that sort of. I think it's more about which concept we want to see come to life more. Okay. Well, like in, right. So well, let's those... agree that lun let's agree that lunatics and make your own luck are are paired up with Aaron. Absolutely. And then let's get ruthless here. Let's get, delete peanut gallery. It's out of here. Scram. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I try to eliminate right. my real life. So all I right. So I. Here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think we got. You know, I think we just need to pick. Which designer so. we want to count what concept we want each designer this, to do. This, this is where this is where it gets this, ugly. This is gets hard. This is yeah. the hard. You know what I yeah. can I just pause for a second and just say what I loved about this process so far. It's not really about we didn't make this about just the artist or just the concept. That's what I liked about this right. process. Yeah. You know, I think I, I'm sure that's pretty authentic in terms of what you experience, right? Uh Casey, it becomes yes. like, do these do we have aces in their places and do we have the right concept and the right artists kind of paired up to do the right things um but i yeah this is it's been fantastic so far now now this gets ugly now now let's let's fight i'll i'll, I'll get us started i'll get us started oh i don't see the vision for iceman like you do maybe okay. casey so i would vote just to even just eliminate that one and just okay. give austin arctos i do think it's one of the weaker names on this list i think that in the right hands it could be absolutely incredible but arctos is so badass yeah and so unusual and unique the story's rad the name sounds freaking cool like yeah i'm with it i'm with it are you with that leon it. or no uh, andre are you guys with that yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, austin did the he did the the slumps right where he kind of had a ghost there so he did the slumps yeah. right so that's what i mean he's capable of doing character stuff yeah i like it. i think I like i'm thinking there. i'm thinking more like um what is the one he just did with the elephants i can't even remember the name uh Aravata. But, yeah Aravata. right did yeah, yeah no, nah, this is good. This makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Hey, Jason, so, me, thank you for taking the bull by the horns. <laughs> Iceman, messing around. Ice. Get out of here. Bye, Next Ice. Time. Bye, Iceman. The, the Jason B one's going to be tough because he could kill both of those. He could kill he both really could. of those. No, that one's very right. clearly about which one we want to see more. Right? Yes, I think you're right. Like, so why don't we debate that? I mean, I think both of these are, come down to that, frankly. Which, which, which has yeah, to be? Let's start with Zero Fox and Lamb Chops, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I want I, <sighs> I I lean Fox. I like the Me double too. the Me double too. meaning of it and kind of how he can get crazy. And and he has like a really cool way of making I, I think for both subject matters, but like kind of like the scare bears where it's like a bear and it's a teddy bear and he's scary or whatever. Yeah. Both of these names have that type of element to it. So I'm I'm fully on board, but out of all the sort of ideas that I pitched, like you know, is it, is it the Rambo one? Is it the, is it the sort of football player one? Is it, but that's the beauty of, that's the beauty of it, right? That Jason run yeah. with it, man. Yeah. Cause yeah. this is, this okay. is an experienced, talented guy that can, yeah. once he's got the concept, let him figure it out. I like it. All right. I'm, I'm on board with that. Yeah. Zero I can't box. wait to see what, what a Jason V Fox looks like. You know, it's going to be the dopest Fox. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just you know what i'm most impressed with is jason mead's keynote skills now they have <laughs> they have vast <laughs> he's become like a legend Definitely look at him legend now he's moving two things at once like he's not and he's got his hat backwards he's just into this man all right so now <laughs> what i do like all day saturday <laughs> <laughs> all, all right. right so we got we got lunatics and make your own luck for aaron so mm. Which one would you rather see, Andre? Like of those two cons? Yeah. Yeah. Why? I, I, I don't know. Like I felt like um the make your own luck was cool, but for some reason, before you explained it, I had a different idea in my head. So I what felt was your idea? 
Um, I don't know. For some reason, when I hear that, I think of a lucky cat. And I, that's kind of like the first, like when I first saw the name, I saw that. So like it being the slot machine, I, I felt like it, I mean, not that it's a bad idea. I don't know. I just a little bit more drawn to the lunatics before that one. Just like, after, because that was the, I don't know what made me think of a lucky cat when I heard that. I thought that that's what it was going to be. And I was like, oh, and then I read it and I was like, oh, okay, but. I don't know. I like the lunatics concept, though. But you you kind of just blew my mind, honestly, because I, I've always been like maybe one reason why this concept has worked is that I've always been sold on this idea of the three leaf clover pinning a, like a four leaf clover on it. But maybe the logo is like this amalgam of all these bad luck items, right? Black cat yeah. and ladders and with a horseshoe collar, right? All sort of getting the crap, maybe all sort of getting the crap kicked out of it, like. Maybe it's a black cat sort of like yeah. breaking a ladder and you know, wait, could you do a all the black stuff. lucky cat? That's what I mean. Like, like, it's, yeah, it's like an unlucky right? cat. Now, listen, Andre, you're giving uh, you're giving Casey free of charge all kinds of new ideas. So let's move yeah. on. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but listen, I, I that that's the interesting thing about it, right? Is like these things can mean so many different things to so many different people, and yeah, um, I don't know. What do you like? What do you want to see, Jason or or Leon? What do you guys want to see? I mean. I'd almost like to see Aaron just take the name, make your own luck and see what he comes up with. Um, not tying it to a particular concept. Yeah. Okay. But I do also like the idea of taking, um, if, if that moth, that lunar moth has such a beautiful pattern, like you mentioned before, just playing off of that, um, and let him, his imagination run wild. Um, so I'm, so here's, I'm really, yeah, I could go either way. I think you just sold me, Jason. I think, I think we should go with make your own luck. And I kind of feel like lunatics as a concept is good, and but it should probably be a character, right? It should be like a guy in a straight, yeah. a moth in a straight jacket going crazy. Yeah. I would love to see yeah, that's Aaron Bird just tackle the name Lunar Moths as a concept, right? I think he would be, right. even Austin would kill just the Lunar Moths, but lunatics is so specific. Maybe these are actually two concepts and, and we should just let Aaron run with Make Your Own Luck. Yeah. I think like, I think when you're, I think the, the beautiful thing about these guys, right. In my opinion is you could, you could leave it so open-ended and they would probably come up with something that would yeah. either be aligned with what you're thinking or exceed your expectations. That's what's yes. cool about this group. Yeah. hundred well, percent. So, that's my hope for all of these guys is I want to yeah. hope they get to see this. They get to see our pitching, our ideas, but then you know, as we collaborate together, I hope that they come up with I something totally it. fresh too. Yeah, but that's also, but also, I think they can just run with what we got. But so we all on this one. This is a yeah, dope, uh, yeah. Group yeah, we're good there. We're good there, right? All right let's look, do this. look at that. Now he's centering the thing. This is out of control. <laughs> this is unbelievable. He's the goat. <laughs> Where's the center at? There it is. There Boom. it is. There it is. Yeah. Wow. It only took it us was. about. It only took us six hours to get here, but we're here. <laughs> <laughs> but that isn't every show you guys do about two hours, so. We're no, good. no, it's uh, only the maybe. Saturday show. <laughs> only the Saturday show. Nah, this was fun though. This was this was fantastic. So, so this right. is this is what we got. So so um, so Casey, next steps are for you to just communicate these concepts out to the artists, right? Yep. So and then what's next out of our final thing i'm going to i'm going to pitch this to the guys asap get them uh get them working brainstorm with them sort of where we could head and yeah we'll we'll see it so the next step is what well, hold on hold on casey do? casey yeah. what's important here for us to understand right so you want to give people yeah. a peek behind the curtain right? right so you use the word pitch an awful lot now what so we just talked about zero zero fox and make your own luck being kind of open-ended for the artist right so tell yeah. me how that conversation differs from one that you're going to have with someone where you do need to narrow it down a little bit. So explain to us how you handle that. Um, and then we can wrap up from there. Yeah. If I need something specific from a designer, what I'm going to do is just give them very specific details. But if it's something like this, like a, like, or something like a branding project, mm -hmm. I'm going to, I might toss out some ideas. I might put together like a mood board for them, something like that. But ultimately, I want them to explore this. Now, these guys all have 
their choice. You know, we're all in our crunch time so that, you know, who knows how much they can actually explore. But yeah. I know, for instance, like Jacobo, that guy, that guy goes deep fast. He's so fast. I mean, John is super fast too, but John sort of gets straight to the point. Jacobo kind of can like meander a little bit, kind of find his way, dip his toe into things. I want to just see them all tackle it under their own sort of process and um, they can take my suggestions or not, our suggestions or not. I think all you guys have been really just just genuinely impressed with the creativity. It's mm -hmm. so cool to see. And um, I can't yeah. wait to see what these guys do. We but yeah, the next step is to, for them to show us their first draft. I mean, I think, I think you're going to get 90% of these guys. You're going to see their designs and it's going to be like almost perfect. It's just going to require a few tweaks. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't Listen, wait to see Listen, I, I hope whoever's putting away the dishes in your home gets it done <laughs> successfully. Because... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because all I'm thinking about as we're talking is I wonder I wonder how big that dishwasher is because that's an awful lot of that's an awful, <laughs> you must have the biggest dishwasher on the face of the freaking earth. <laughs> it's my girl. It's my girlfriend making dinner, but uh, between her and her dog, it's been quite a. Quite, I, been, I'm, I'm kidding. I, lo <laughs> I love the authenticity of it, man. But I can tell you, man, you've got a big ass dishwasher. So, I, um, Casey, before we wrap up, what's for dinner? I have no idea. Oh, man. All right, so you're so <laughs> it's going on, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. what, I did, you know, work, working from home has been great. You know, my son is you know doing homeschool now because yeah. of remote learning, as they call it. Oh, and man. so it's been cool to get to spend that extra time with them. But I, I gotta say, I miss my office. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, we gave you almost a virtual office here, right? Mm -hmm. This has been great. This has been, been fantastic. Great. Now, next, you know, in the future, when we do this, you guys will do it at Brandiosa Studios, and uh, it'll be cool. Yeah, it'd be fun. We're All right, well, San Diego. Oh yeah, a little. We can always. I, oh, I'm I'm down for Southern California. So, so uh, hell yeah, let's let's do a live one. All all five of us in in Brandio Studios in the fall. That'd be awesome. That'd be outstanding. Let's do it. So so, um, so Andre so Andre can't cross straight state borders though. So just so you're aware, <laughs> yeah. he's a damn lie. <laughs> he needs at least forty eight hours notice. That's, that's all. <laughs> he just he just got to get that he just got to get that anklet off. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> no. Nah, oh. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, but this was fun, guys. Uh, listen, Jason, you're gonna you say guys. something, Jason? Were you? Yeah. So that? so the next series of videos that you'll see in Plink Vision, we're gonna pair up. These designers, they're going to show us their first drafts. We're going to solicit feedback from us, mm -hmm. from me, from both, you know, both of the designers. And then uh, after that, we'll uh, we'll start getting into the final product. Ooh. This sure. sounds exciting. Wait. Leon Wait. perked up with, when the next steps came up. He, all of a sudden, his posture became extremely straight. Let's, let's get it rolling. Let's get it he's rolling. All, I'm happy. He's all slouchy <laughs> during the show, and then he postured right up. All right, so Wait. Leon, big fella, take us away. Yep. Make sure you guys like, rate, review, subscribe, turn those notifications on to make sure you catch part two, Clink Vision. We'll be back very, very soon with it. Until next time, stay fitted. We'll catch you guys later. All right. See you, everybody. Peace.